Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm so excited to bring you a recommendation video of horror books, but this time they are recommendations coming from other horror booktubers. I have done similar collaborations like this in the past, so I'm going to link those videos down below. But basically what I've done is I've reached out to all the horror booktubers that I can find that haven't participated yet in one of my collaborations and asked them to recommend you one of their favorite horror books. I have gotten clips back from a good variety here. Not everyone is always able to send me a clip, so if someone is missing, it's not because I'm trying to be exclusive in any means. It usually just means that they weren't able to film within the time frame. Otherwise, I really do hope that you watch through the whole video. Check out the links in the description box. Hopefully you find some new favorite books and also some new favorite booktubers. Let's all get started. Hey everybody, I'm Richard. Welcome to Are You Into Horror. First off, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Rachel at Shades of Orange for including me in this video. I love horror. And as you guys can tell behind me, yeah, I've been reading it for years. So the book I want to recommend to you guys is from 1975. It's a Warner book and it is Audrey Rose by Frank DeFolitta. As you can see on the cover, it says born 1959, died 1964. Born 1964. Yes. Elliot Hoover has lost his his daughter, Audrey, and she burned to death at the age of five in a horrible car crash. Janice and Bill Templeton live in New York. They've got a beautiful 10-year-old daughter, Ivy. Ivy is having horrible dreams, and she has got a creepy man following her to and from school in the mornings. Ivy is having awful, awful nightmares. She she is dreaming, you know, she has dreams that she answers to the name of Audrey Rose. She sees a girl in, that doesn't look like her in the reflection of the mirror. Is Ivy Templeton the reincarnation of Audrey Rose? Forget the movie. If you've seen the movie, forget the movie. You've got to read the book that the movie was based on. This was originally published in 1975. It's an incredible, horrific read. It's sad, it's scary, it's thought-provoking. Yeah, that's my recommendation. And you guys, once again, thanks so much to Rachel. I'm Richard with Are You Into Horror. Take care, you guys. Have a good one, and let's get scared. Hey guys, my name is April, and my YouTube channel is Nerdtastic. I've been with the uh, YouTube community for six years, but I've been a part of BookTube for one year as of July. Um, things I do on my channel, I do unboxings, book hauls, TBRs and wrap ups and some lifestyle videos. Um, I read primarily horror and Christian novels because I am a Christian and I do love my horror. Um, but I also read some YA, um, actually I read a lot of YA, um, <laughs> some middle grade and some elementary because I am also an educator. And um, the my favorite book that I chose for this video is Dracula. And I brought all my copies of Dracula. So this is the one I use the most, of course. Um, this is my all-time favorite one. I got this one at um, Walmart and this one is um, just a copy that my husband bought me uh, and it has Dracula in it along with some of Stoker's other novels. Um, this is my all-time favorite um, romance. <laughs> you wouldn't think of this as romance, but this is my all-time favorite romance. Um, I love the drive that he has to reunite with his wife. Um, although it is um, very cloudy because he sees his wife in a doppelganger that is not his wife. <laughs> um, it, but he's very persistent in finding that true love. Um, so just his journey, even though it is so um, deluded and he uses a lot of manipulation and he hurts a lot of people along the way, I just do admire the romance in it the old school romance. Um, thank you, Rachel, for also allowing me to be a part of this video and a part of your channel for the time. Hi there, I am Lydia Peaver, and you may have stumbled upon my channel before, Typical Books, or seen my books reviewed here at Shades of Orange. So thank you, Rachel, for inviting me to talk about my favorite book, The Shining by Stephen King. I've gone through different copies of The Shining from a smaller hardcover back in the 80s, 
to this beautiful hardcover edition bought for me as a gift by my husband because he knows this is one of the Stephen King books that holds a very special place in my heart this in Pet Cemetery, but The Shining I have a special affinity for because of the snow. Living here in Canada, like Rachel, we do have a different relationship with the snow, perhaps. You know how things are uh, very different at night under cover of darkness. Things are also very different even in broad daylight under cover of snow, so it has a very insidious feel. And in The Shining, we meet Jack Torrance, who is the winter caretaker of the Overlook hotel and along with his wife and son they are snowbound and that weighs heavily on their psyches along with other problems that Jack has brought up there inadvertently along with them and problems that live in the hotel itself. I feel this book needs very little introduction but suffice it to say I have a real fear of things lurking in the showers of the hotels in this particular book and it has spilled over to real life in some small phobias and I'm sure many people who have read a lot of Stephen King's work have that same sort of thing be it clowns, the dark, rats or who knows what but this in particular lives a fear of snowbound hotels Outside of its slipcover, this is this beautiful edition from Subterranean Press that came out a couple years ago and signed by Stephen King. It is a beautiful edition. So again, thank you very much, Rachel, for having me talking about The Shining. It is my number one horror recommendation. Hello, my fellow weirdos. It's me, Marie. I would normally be welcoming you into my channel, but I am so honoured to be here on Shades of Orange with Rachel. So thank you very much for Rachel for inviting me. The book that I will be recommending is Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This takes place in a very upper middle class town where you've got a desperate housewife set types of sort of situation. Women staying at home, their children are growing up and um, their husbands are away at work and they find themselves bored. So a group of them get together along with our protagonist Patricia to form a book club. It starts off with a genuine kind of innocence, but it soon develops into a uh, slightly darker twist on the normal book club where they read a true crime book each month, focusing on different serial killers. Then one night, Patricia gets attacked by one of her elderly neighbors, who then unfortunately afterwards passes away. And her nephew moves into the woman's house to kind of close over her affairs. Patricia feels somewhat connected to him, given the fact that the aunt died after attacking her and she wants to help him out and give him her condolences. And so she goes down and helps him out, this gentleman called James. And immediately he becomes a fond friend and a member of her family, as well as a member of the community. She adores him at first, but then she starts to realize that there's something very wrong with James. And thanks to all the books that she's read with her book club, she realizes that he has a lot in common with the figures that they're reading about and starts to suspect that there's something very wrong with him. Um, but it, is worse than she thinks. It's not that he's just a serial killer, it's that he is actually a vampire. Now, as you can imagine, Patricia isn't immediately believed, but she, when her family becomes threatened, is determined to stop James from hurting anyone ever again. It is a great read. Think Desperate Housewives meets True Blood. There's humour to it, there is genuine um, suspense, and there are moments where you will get so frustrated and so determined to find out what will happen that you will not be able to put the book down. It's my favourite read so far of 2020. Definitely pick it up. Caitlin R. Kiernan writes like a gothic cathedral on fire, Poppy Z. Bright. That is a quote about the book that I'm going to be talking about from one of my favourite authors to another one of my favourite authors. And I think it perfectly encompasses me and my tastes in books and in life um, and in a channel. Hi everybody, um, my name is Josie. I have a small channel here on YouTube called Josie the Reading Witch. And I love to read all things diverse, um, queer, very open-minded, love reading about different experiences, and I also love all things gothic, horror, I love dark fiction, um, I am a goth, I'll always be a goth, um, I love anything witchy, I love anything supernatural, and this book over here that I'm going to talk about, Silk, perfectly encompasses my reading taste, and it's one of my all-time favourite books. So Caitlin O'Kinnon, one of my all-time favourite authors. What I love about Caitlin is that she writes these kind of twisted psychological horrors that then also encompass some body horror, some come monsters, some demons, some ghosts. You never really know where you are, and the narratives aren't necessarily linear, and I love that. It's challenging, it's beautiful, the writing is lyrical, and it's dark. 
And she also features a lot of diverse characters. So the main protagonist is this is queer. It's also set in the 90s, kind of the goth punk, sort of desolate 90s alternative culture. There are spiders in this. If you are arachnophobic, stay away. But if you kind of like that psychological horror about a relationship, about someone thinking they're losing their mind, or are there, are there really monsters in the attic? It is amazing. It is one of those books that I will read over and over again and it sticks with you and it stays with you and it creates this incredibly dark, wonderful, fabulous gothic atmosphere. And I think it is the perfect Halloween read, as are all of Caitlin's books, but I would absolutely pick this one up. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hey everyone, it's John here. I wanted to talk to you guys about Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. Laurel Hightower is a wonderful writer, and if you do not know who she is, you should check out her work. Her debut novel, Whispers in the Dark, was one of my favorite novels that I read last year. This year she came out with a novella from Awful Mids Press. It's called Crossroads, and this is an excellent book. It's the story of a woman named Chris who loses her son in a tragic accident, um, and it has changed the way that she's lived her life ever since. She's completely devastated. She wants to be able to talk to her son, obviously, as, as any mother would. Um, she wants to be able to talk to her son and see her son again, and she believes that she is seeing him again. And she goes to great lengths to be able to see him, save him. I say save him because that's what the story is kind of about. Chris is still being his mother, even though her son is dead. Um, and Trey was her heart. She wants to do whatever she can for him. So she's going to try that even, even while he is no longer amongst the living. This is a deeply emotional novel, novella. It's great stuff. I can't recommend this high enough. This is my favorite book that I've read this year. I'd imagine that it's going to stay that way. You, you need tissues. You need a stiff drink. This is just a tough one to read. It's going to hurt you, but you're going to love it. You need to read this. Hello, I'm Lisa. I also go by Pink Paradox and my channel is called Pink Paradox Reads. The book that I want to recommend to you is Burnt Offerings by Robert Morasco and this is actually one of my favorite horror novels of all time. In this story we meet the Rolf family, Dad Ben, Mom Marion, and Son David and they are desperate to escape the oppressive summer city heat of their tiny queen's apartment and they can barely believe their luck when they find a stately mansion-like house in Long Island that they can rent for cheap. The owners, a pair of siblings, let them have this special deal as long as they are okay with their elderly mother staying in her top floor apartment and that the Rolfs look after her, mainly providing her three meals a day. The family agrees and along with Ben's aunt Elizabeth, they settle into their new summer house. But soon, strange things start occurring. Each family member, in turn, is plagued by mysterious experiences and strange accidents start to occur. And there seems like there is something evil dwelling inside the walls of this house. If you love The Shining and The Haunting of Hill House, you should read this book. If you hated The Shining and The Haunting of Hill House, you should still read this book. It is, in my opinion, a an, an underrated gem that more horror lovers should get to experience. Hi guys, my name is Gloria. Um, my channel is called Gloria McNeely Writer because when I'm not reviewing books, I am working on becoming a published horror writer myself. So, first of all, thank you so much to Rachel from Shades Orange. I you like my eyeshadow and my squish here for including me in this video. The book that I want to recommend today is an Irish writer and it is just recently republished. It's called The Unforeseen by Dorothy McCardle. This is part of Trump Press's Recovered Voices series. Uh, Dorothy McCardle hasn't been printed since the 50s I think and I'm very glad that they have reprinted her because I absolutely adore this book. So this is a gothic novel and it follows the story of Virgilia who is a 40-something widow with an adult daughter who's an artist and she starts seeing things and she starts hallucinating and she comes to believe that these are visions of the future. She starts seeing things that are going to happen very soon and 
she is the only one who is worried about this. Everyone around her tells her it's amazing, it's a fantastic ability, but she is very anxious about it and she doesn't want her daughter to know. And when her daughter comes to visit, she has to try and keep it a secret from her. The visions become a lot more harrowing and a lot more dangerous and especially her perception of them becomes quite dangerous as well. This is a beautifully written book but it's also quite unique in that it is the older woman, it is the mother who actually develops these supernatural abilities and while there is a little bit of romance in this between her daughter and someone that she meets, the strongest bond in this novel is the love between mother and daughter and it's the only book I've read like this and it's it's really interesting to see and I would highly recommend it. Hello horror fans, my name is Anda and today I'm going to recommend the book Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. This book is fun, it's creepy, it's just plain entertaining. So it's told from the perspective of a young girl named Mary. She has an older sister Marjorie who's experiencing some mental illness issues. However, as the story progresses, it m seems maybe a, li a bit like demonic possession. So much so, in fact, that the family actually signs on a company to come and film it and release it as a television series. Throughout the novel, you kind of start with this base level knowledge of these characters, but as the story progresses, you know, all these layers are being peeled back and it's becoming more and more intense. Um, there are really intense scenes that are related to possession that are just plain creepy. However, they are very identical to what we've been told possession looks like within horror films. So it makes you wonder like, is she possessed? Is she just going through some mental issues? Or is this all a ruse? Because the family is actually suffering from some financial issues and they're being paid quite handsomely to uh, partake in this series about them. So. The writer really leaves it up to the interpretation of the reader, which I love. So at the end, when you close the book, there's no clear answer as to what happened. It's fun, it's creepy, and I hope if you do give this book a chance that you love it as much as I did. Hey everybody, my name is Deja and my channel is Deja's Book World. I just want to say thank you so much to Rachel for including me in this horror booktuber collab. I'm actually quite new to booktube in general and especially to the horror side of it and the genre in general. I also read a lot of fantasy, romance, and thrillers on my channel and I'm just really excited to continue on my horror journey since I've loved horror movies since I was very young. So the book that I have to recommend is Suffer the Children by Craig DeLuey. This book is amazing. It's like a vampire zombie pandemic book with a little bit of like purge vibes in there and it's just it's fantastic. In this book we basically follow uh, a bunch of different adults. Most of them are parents and in this world at the same time all children die and then three days later they resurrect and it's kind of dealing with the repercussions of that especially because they start asking for blood. So we see these creatures but then we also see how far people will go and it's scary the psychological effect something like this can have on people and I just loved all the different facets and uh, perspectives that were used throughout this novel. I just thought it was very creative. I've never heard of a concept like this before and I think it was just so well done. I think this book has something for every horror reader out there. It has kind of like I said like the paranormal um, like zombie vampire aspect. It has a uh, familial aspect. This also kind of reminded me of Pet Cemetery in a way with um, a parent being affected by death and things happening around them and I just think that this book is amazing and if you like vampires and pandemics and anything where people go to extreme lengths I would highly recommend this book. Thank you again to Rachel for including me in this collab. Hi everyone my name is Rain, my channel name is Bruce and Bynes. One of my favorite horror books has to be The Devil Crept In by Anya Allborn. This is a story that is set in the very mysterious town of Deer Valley where lots of strange activity is always going on. There are various animal mutilations and there once was a boy who was murdered and no one really knows what happened. They just suspect there was some sort of serial killer. So we start the story following 10-year-old Stevie Clark 
whose cousin and best friend Jude has gone missing. And no one in the town really knows what happened, but they do suspect he may have ran away. So to Stevie, no one really pays enough attention to his disappearance. So he wants to do whatever it takes to find out what happened himself. Anya Allborn just does such a great job of writing these characters that you truly feel like are real. And it's no different with Stevie. He is just so endearing and sweet. He is often made fun of because he has a stutter and he has a really terrible home life. So Jude is like the only person that he feels like he has in the world and he's just so determined to find out what happened and you're just on his side from the very beginning. There's such a creepy atmosphere that is brought into this book from the woods and this very mysterious abandoned house. The story also takes a very weird turn where you're kind of thrust into this random perspective, whole different story, and then it's all tied up in the end and you're like blown away. So I absolutely love this one. It's a lot of fun. Hope you do too. Hello, little goblins. My name is Jay. My channel is Cup of Jay, and I am a fellow book nerd and consumer of all things horror. I read a lot of horror. I also read a lot of fantasy and sci-fi and lots of other things, but mainly you guys, I like my spooks. Now, big shout out to Rachel for asking me to collab. Thank you, Rachel. But also, I had a very interesting time trying to pick out the right recommendation for you. I went through a lot of different titles and I ultimately settled on Uzumaki by Junji Ito. And if you're into being afraid of things that you never thought you would have been afraid of, Uzumaki by Junji Ito is for you. Uzumaki is about a town called Kurzo Cho and it is plagued by a supernatural curse involving spirals. Now, these spirals, interestingly enough, cause the citizens of this town to become paranoid and obsessed about all things spirals. The manga does have main characters, specifically these two teenagers, but it does still sort of have this anthology feel to it because it details how the spirals sort of exercise their horrific power over the citizens of this town and their physical and psychological states. There is something of a time warp involved, there are snails involved. There is just all sorts of terribly unsettling things that occur in this manga that you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't ever think would unsettle you, and here it is, Junji Ito unsettles the heck out of you. I remember when I was first reading this manga, I genuinely stayed awake, terrified in my bed all night. I am almost 30 and I was just quaking under my sheets because I never thought I would be afraid of things like spirals or snails. So if you're interested in a new and different kind of scare, Uzumaki by Junji Ito is going to be for you. I hope you definitely pick up a copy soon if you haven't read it already. And thank you again, Rachel, for this collab and this awesome project. I hope you guys have the best spooky season. Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Donnie Goodman, the host of The Horror Hypothesis on YouTube and on Instagram. And I am here today to recommend Earthworm Gods and AKA The Conqueror Worms by Brian Keene, one of my favorite authors. This book is essentially about what would happen if it started raining one day and never stopped. It's dystopian, it's bleak, and the rain is the least of the problems of the remaining survivors, the, the folks that aren't wiped out by tsunamis and hurricanes and, and all of the other events, the ones that, that survive, are left to contend with some pretty horrible things. You could probably guess with a name like Earthworm Gods what those things are, but it's got this awesome blend of bizarro uh, and horror and splatterpunk and it's just a fantastic read. There's a sequel, uh, Earthworm Gods 2, which is also tremendous. And if you have not read a Brian Keene novel before, I don't think that this is a, a bad one to start with. So check out Brian Keene's Earthworm Gods if you are looking to find something that is kind of bleak and perfect for a rainy day.
Thank you to Rachel and the Shades of Orange for featuring me. Hi everyone, my name is Penelope and I am from the channel Penelope's Picks. And today I'm going to share with you one of my all-time favorite horror novels, which is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. This book was published in 2016 and I read it in 2018. And two years later, I still haven't found a book that scared me quite as much as this book did. The story follows a nameless female narrator who is on her way to meet her boyfriend's parents for the very first time. For me when it comes to horror, I love a subtle eerie horror. I don't need to read about a bunch of gore to be scared. I mean I will read about gore, don't get me wrong, but for me it's about the build-up and Ian Reid completely delivered on that. There is so much tension in this book and as I was reading it I kept thinking of a horror movie. Like when you're watching a horror movie and the music is getting high-pitched and louder and you know that something's about to pop up somewhere, like you're just you're dreading it but you're also excited by it. That's pretty much how I felt through the entire last half of the book. I loved this book so much and like I said two years later I still haven't found a book that scared me as much as this one. I would highly recommend that you pick up I'm Thinking of Ending Things if you're interested in reading a psychological horror that is going to keep you guessing. Don't watch the movie. Don't. Also on my channel I have a video entitled My Favorite Spooky Things that I uploaded last Halloween and in it I list all of my favorite horror tropes, the things I love to read about, the things I love to watch in movies, and it's kind of just my backstory and my history with horror and me talking about why it is my favorite genre. Thank you so much to Rachel for inviting me to be a part of this collaboration video and again I hope you all will consider picking up one of my favorite horror novels I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. Hi Rachel and thank you for inviting me onto your channel. My name is Janine Pipe. I'm a horror writer and reviewer from the UK and the book that I would like to recommend to everybody is the new Flame Tree release from Hunter Shea, Misfits. The reason why I would um, say that this book sums up um, myself and my channel and why I would recommend it to other people is that this is a creature feature crypto story with a bit of a difference. It's the first time that I've ever read a story featuring the melon heads. Um, I did know a little bit about them but um, this book goes far more into their history and talks about the melon heads and they're a completely different kind of creature than we're used to. Um, but one of the things I like most about Misfits um, is that it's set in the 90s and the 90s and the grunge era, that's me, that's when I grew up. Um, it's about five teenagers that um, are kind of outsiders and things that bring them together something terrible happens to one of the main characters and they decide to exact revenge and um, the revenge is all to do with the melon heads and um, let me just say that you cheer on these kids you really want them to to get the retribution that is made for them so I think that this is a great book to read at this time of year but because it's not particularly set in Halloween you can read it whenever you want. Um, I'm a big big fan of Hunter Shea, he, um, he writes fantastic creature features, um, all of his stuff is really good but because this is his new one I think this is the one that I would definitely say sums up the way that I feel about horror, um, I can only inspire to write like him one day. And um, if you like Hunter and you like this kind of thing, then you'll like my channel. So thank you very much. Bye. Hey YouTube, this is Taylor from Taylor Talks Tales with a horror book recommendation video for you today. So it was very difficult for me to choose just one book to talk about, but I ended up choosing The Fisherman by John Langan because I feel like this book really encapsulates what I look for in a horror story. There's cosmic and Lovecraftian elements to it. There's folk and rural elements to it. It is well written, compulsively readable, great characters, this awesome outdoor setting, and this wonderful sense of place. It's eerie. It is just has fantastic imagery and is just wonderful to read. And it has this really cool story with a story element to it that I really like. So, the plot of the fisherman's fairly basic to begin with. You have a gentleman named Abe, and Abe really gets into fishing after he loses his wife to cancer. 
he ends up bonding with a co-worker named Dan after Dan loses his entire family in a very horrific car accident. So the two spend their days fishing together. When one day, Dan mentions going to fish at this very secluded spot known as Dutchman's Creek. So the two of them decide to go fishing there together. And along the way, they stop at this diner. And the diner, the owner of the diner ends up telling them the story about the history of Dutchman's Creek and how eerie it is and pretty much why there are a lot of mysterious disappearances and why very few of the locals actually go there. It's supposed to be very long time. And the story takes place from there and that's where the story within the story only comes from. It is just wonderfully done, fantastically written. It is a slow burn kind of story, but it is worth it. The payoff is great. The climax is very intense and the ending is just very, very cool, very neat and well done. It will really haunt you after the last page. It'll stick with you and you'll definitely want to read it again at some point. It is very unique, very different from a lot of other stories and I think if you like anything from like Pet Cemetery to just like classically written horror stories, you'll really like this. And of course if you're a fan of Lovecraft or cosmic horror. I'd say this is a little bit more cosmic and less Lovecraft, but you'll still really enjoy it. So, overall, I really recommend The Fisherman by John Lingan. He will hook you from the very beginning and slowly reel you in until the very last page. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end. Normally I end my videos by plugging my own channel, but instead I'm gonna remind you that the links to all of the creators that were in this collaboration are in the description box, and I hope you go and subscribe to them. I am so thankful for this community. I love to see the horror booktube corner of the internet grow, and there's always new diverse voices that are popping up. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with with a comment because that really does help it to be more visible online and give more attention to these other creators. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with another video soon. Okay, bye-bye.